I remember these. Oh, there's my screwdriver. There's my screwdriver. Now. Just putting the locking bolts back into the carriage assembly. I had them off for while I was working on it. cut on that one just to address the elephant in the room there is a lot of stick out on this which doesn't help that this is completely unsupported and the rod is springing away from the cutter as it cuts. I'd say we're not doing too bad. Alright, what we have to do now is drill through the end there. There's a close-up of what my first lathe turning looks like. Completely unsupported, stick out a mile long and terrible chatter. Phew! I'm glad that fits through the bore, otherwise I would have been in trouble. That's the hole that will take the screw that will clamp our cutter. I'll also add this isn't mild steel rod. This is stainless, which to my understanding makes it even more of a bugger. It was, however, the only stock I could get that would fit in those bearings. Sound good. The six point five mil drill bit gets all the fun jobs, like drilling through steel. Not like the 6mm or the 5mm bit, they just get, you know, Zamac. This it has to deal with steel. Lucky it. Oh, I see why. As I was putting cutting oil in, I noticed it just kept running out, out somewhere. I couldn't figure out where. That hole goes right to the um, bigger one. So the cutting oil was going in and then going out the side. Something just occurred to me. These taps are made out of refined dog shit, but they should still be hardened steel. So I'm tempted to zip this off and grind a cutter into it rather than try and get one get a square section of stock through there. I think I might just do that. Tap will be useful for once in its life, this particular tap. Aluminium and Zamac I don't bother, but for the steel I will add some cutting fluid.
That was terrifying. But hopefully that'll work as a um, boring tool. Alright, we're going to cut some shims to put on top of this. Then we can see about the bearing caps. I think I shall do three thicknesses of shims for these. The idea behind the shims is that as the um, bearing starts to wear away on the outside, I can make sure that the headstock bearing caps clamp down on the bearings by simply removing some of these shims or replacing them with thinner shims. I'm using um, aluminium can shims because I'm tired of using up my good shims on these. So the plan is to set the lathe going and use the sandpaper to reduce the diameter a bit with 180 grit, not the 80 on the belt sander. You can see the lip here that it started to cut. I think I may need to make my cutter shorter and to take smaller bites at the apple. This is the bearing I'm sizing it for, so still quite a while to go on it. Well, it's kind of working. I think the cutter geometry is crap. Getting rid of this bolt here because I can't slide things straight off the end because this is too jolly high. So the plan is I'm going to take this off drill through um, this all the way through to the bed itself so that the bed um, so the bolt here will go straight through to the bed and I can cut this end off entirely that's the other neat thing about this gingery or gingery lathe if this was a stock lathe I'd feel a lot worse about drilling into the um, chassis of it and modifying it. I don't know why, but I just don't like doing modifications to stuff I've bought. Now to get things off all I have to do is go and they come off. I don't jam on that thing. Minor quality of life improvement. This is 5 8 by 5 8 key steel. I'm going to cut a section of it and make a um, gauge that I'm going to use on the boring bar. As per usual with the aluminium, the pencil was like, was that it? last one he instructs to lightly hit it with a hammer so that the screw will drag.
Oh, that's my depth gauge made. These two screws clamp it onto the bar, and this third one will be what I use to set the um, depth of the cutter. Okay, so I was playing around with this, and I actually found the reason it's cutting bad is because there's a little piston here where I provided rake for the cutter, and it clogs up with um, shavings from the Zamac in no time flat. And once it does clog up, the cutter stops cutting annoyingly. But if I clear out the chips. starts cutting again until it gets clogged up and the cycle repeats. Okay, lesson learned. Adjusted the cutter so it's a slightly more rounded um, tip on the actual cutting point instead of just a spike. Rounded it, to, uh, rounded it a little. It seems to be cutting better. Uh, this is what I originally bought these snap gauges for. I didn't originally buy these to check the um, calipers, but that's where we got them first. Twenty-four. I apologise. Just to explain what I'm doing, I forgot that I tried the flat disc on this blasted wear pad. As a result, while the um, gib is the right height, this part has a little divot right where I hit it with that blasted, blasted, blasted um, flat disc. So the part where the gib was sitting here was perfectly flat. The part here, which was touching the ways, was recessed, so even if the gibbs was nice and tight, there was still a hollow that the ways were flapping up and down it, and that is why I was getting a rubbish surface finish. For the holes I picked up something new. 6mm single hole punch. Also, interestingly, you push on this and you think this is solid as a rock. Then you have to put it through the boring bar and you realise just how much flex there is in solid as a rock. I'll test that again now that I've done that little spring pass. I didn't change the depth of the cutter at all. So let's see what happened. 27.9. So that took off a whole 0.3 of a mil. And that was just from the fact that this bar def yeah, deflects away from the work when it's cutting. It's what they call a spring pass. I'm wiping the bore clean when I test this so that my measurement isn't thrown off by a little bit of metal shavings being caught between the snap gauge and the bore. I was also told by a very helpful chappy that you um, thing it so it's 15 degrees or so above the bore and you sweep it down through till it's below the Thing, or as close as I can get it, and that'll get me a better reading than just trying to get that perfectly sorted. You may have noticed with that one, there was just as much chips coming off this, coming out of that bore when it was coming back out, 
is when it was going back in, or going in initially. And that's because of the, the, the bar deflex. Also, I'm measuring f uh, between the top and the bottom. I'm not measuring on the sides because that's where the shims are. And I don't, I don't know if it affects it or not, but I don't really want to deal with it. I'm going to be, have to be very careful in how I adjust the cutter on this one. Because it's getting very, very close to final dimension. Alright. Take that off. I was worrying about this not fitting through here when it, something occurred to me. If I put this in here, this isn't lined up either, so I was worrying about nothing. If you're thinking to yourself, it looks like he doesn't know what he's doing, you're not wrong. <laughs> 